it's time to enter into the discussion of position of a point. Please recall that in the case of parabola, the region which contained the focus was termed as inside and the region which was devoid of the focus was termed as outside. Exactly in the same fashion, even in the case of ellipse, the region containing both the foci was inside and the region literally sitting outside the closed elliptical curve was outside. Exactly in the same fashion, this particular portion which contains the focus F1 constitutes inside region of the hyperbola and even this portion which contains the focus F2 also constitutes the inside region of the same hyperbola. I agree both these portions are disjoint of each other but any point coming from either of these two shaded regions is termed as the interior point of this hyperbola. Got it? Next, the region which is devoid of any focus, which is this region. It is also the region which contains the center. This constitutes outside the hyperbola and any point coming from here is called the exterior point of the hyperbola. Cool. Next, well, needless to say, the infinitely many points which are sitting on the two branches of this hyperbolic curve constitute the region on the hyperbola. Okay, that means my hyperbola is dividing the Cartesian plane into three distinct regions inside, on, and outside. Okay, sorted. Now, if I give you the coordinates of a point and the equation of a hyperbola, how will you determine the position of this point with respect to the given hyperbola? That's the ultimate question. So basically, what I'm trying to ask you is, give me that condition based upon which I can decide and hence conclude that my given point is lying inside the hyperbola or on it or outside it. Now, you know, the very first step to this answer is, Compute S, as always. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is go to the equation of my hyperbola and take this constant 1 to the left-hand side, create right-hand side equal to 0. When I do that, I'll get x squared by a squared minus y squared by b squared minus 1 equals 0. In the quest of doing this, the expression which gets created on the left-hand side is what is your S. Okay? Step 2 says compute S1, which is the value of S at point P, that is your given point. So what I'm going to do for that, in place of X, I'm going to plug in X1. In place of Y, I'm going to plug in the Y coordinate of P, that is Y1. And thus, the expression that I get is actually a fixed real number, which is my S1. Now, for a parabola, for a circle, even for an ellipse, what did we have? S1 greater than 0 implied outside, S1 equal to 0 implied on, and S1 less than 0 implied inside. This conclusion doesn't prevail for a hyperbola. In fact, exact opposite conclusion prevails here. What I'm trying to say is, S1 greater than 0 for the first time implies that the point is sitting inside the hyperbola. S1 less than 0 for the first time will imply that the point is sitting outside the hyperbola, whereas S1 equal to 0 obviously will continue to imply that the point is sitting on the hyperbola. Do you understand? So if you are able to remember this, very good. If you are not, trust me, it's very, very simple to justify this. For example, let's take the first case. If I want to show that S1 greater than 0 implies the inside region of the hyperbola, that means in a way I'm trying to show that the value of S at any interior point will be positive. Now, you can very evidently catch hold of two interior points, which are F1 and F2. Their coordinates are AE, 0 and minus AE, 0. Out of these two, pick up any one point. Let's say I pick up F1. Now, compute the value of S at F1. It will come out to be what? A square E square by A square 
minus 0 square by b square minus 1, right? So it was x square by a square minus y square by b square minus 1. Right, in place of x, I've plugged in the x coordinate of f1. In place of y, I've plugged in the y coordinate of f1. Simplify, what do you end up getting? This is e square minus 1. Remember, e is the eccentricity of the hyperbola, which is greater than 1. Right, so e square is also greater than 1. So obviously, e square minus 1 will be as expected positive. Because the value of s at an interior point f1 is coming out to be positive, you can definitely conclude that the value of s at any interior point will be positive and hence s1 greater than 0 will give you the region sitting inside the hyperbola. Similarly, if you want to justify that s1 less than 0 is giving you outside region, for that what you will do is, you will certainly want to show that the value of s at any exterior point is negative. For that, just catch hold of the very evidently visible exterior point, which is your center, having coordinates 0, 0. Now, find the value of s at origin, which is your center. It will come out to be 0 square by a square minus 0 square by b square minus 1, which obviously, as expected, is negative. So, because the value of s at an exterior point is coming out to be negative, you can definitely conclude that the value of s at any exterior point will be negative and hence s1 less than 0 will obviously constitute the region sitting outside the hyperbola. And lastly, again needless to say, s1 equal to 0 will continue to imply the region on the hyperbola because if a point is sitting on the hyperbola, it will satisfy its equation and hence for that point, s1 will come out to be equal to 0, no doubt about that.